Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be talking about some books that I, I I kind of assumed from the off that I would be not really my kind of thing as much um, and it's a little bit of a surprise to me really that I've ended up reading them um, especially because it feels very trendy and zeitgeisty right now um, and that is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman um, and I think it's kind of one of those interesting things whenever there's something like a, a TV or film adaptation of a book I um, I, I think I'm tiny, a tiny bit stubborn and really want to read the book first. Um, you know, sometimes sometimes films or TV versions of them might be better. I don't know if that's heresy to say. Uh, but um, I was really quite intrigued by um, by these, partly because it's kind of queer and partly because of the, the reaction to it. I think seeing it being adapted, I, I you know, I thought maybe it's a bit too schmaltzy and saccharin for my tastes that maybe it's not exactly the kind of thing I'd love but then I saw lots of these really interesting outpourings uh, from people on on Twitter and just more generally um, talking about how it made them miss what they didn't have essentially at school and you know the idea that for a lot of um, LGBTQ plus people um, their lives at school um, can be quite traumatic or can be quite difficult and a key part of that is the stigma faced um, by those people for coming from from people externally but also it's maybe just not having that that representation outside um, of themselves you know being able to see that in um, in TV in films in books in music and I think obviously we've you know a lot of progress has been made on that front and you know Hot Stopper fills a really interesting role within all of that um, for, for sort of a one day generation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about them. I'll try and keep it relatively spoiler free because I think these are quite lovely to just experience by themselves and I've not watched the Netflix series yet so I will at some point go into to doing that um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the books first um, and yeah like I said I won't go too much into spoiler territory at all. Pretty much anything I'll talk about is kind of can be seen on the back of the, the books themselves. So first up, um, a little bit of background. So we all start with this first book, uh, volume one, as <laughs> there was a volume numbers. I don't know why I'm saying that as if there's a really dramatic title to them all. Um, but the idea is, you know, sort of as old as time in terms of two people meet at school and fall in love. Like that's not a particularly groundbreaking story overall. Um, and I don't think this series really in, like is aiming for that. I don't think this series is trying to really push the envelope out and be, like you're completely reinventing the genre. I think it knows what it does and it does it very, very well. Um, which is, you know, a story of two boys meeting at school. Um, one of them is already out, um, our, you know, our, our character Charlie, and he meets Nick who is not out and at that point doesn't really know how he might identify, um, sort of later identifying as bi. And um, it's a sort of a, a really interesting and very charming story. I think that really is the word that kept on hitting me as I was reading these. Is just this is incredibly charming. It's just full of love and warmth. Obviously, there are obstacles, there are barriers, as any story has. You know, the kind of the ups and downs of that sort of trajectory of a of a story. But it is managed quite beautifully here, where it's not completely erasing the idea that there may be difficulties. Um, but it's also not dwelling on it too much. It more focuses on just these two characters really trying to find themselves um, and how that works within a school setting, how it works within their groups of friends, within their families, all those sorts of things. And um, yeah, it's just really quite lovely. I don't think you're really going to go into these, uh, you know, thinking that there are going to be these big dramatic plot twists and you know it's not going to be like a season of Riverdale where they're like I've not watched it but from what I've heard just sort of random magical stuff just starts happening after a while it's not that it is just you know teen love story you know the ups and downs that you would expect of that you know people having difficulties talking to people about it there being secrets people feeling betrayed all of that kind of stuff but I think Overall, I still found that really quite sweet and I wasn't expecting to really devour these as I did. I just sort of found myself really tearing through them and I read three uh, in one night and then sort of saved the fourth one for this morning. Um, and it's there's something so powerful about seeing that representation and yes, I will sort of, you know, acknowledge that we are talking about two um, central characters in the UK, both um, 
sort of uh, both white or fairly light skinned, um, both cisgender, you know, they are kind of, there's not, you know, it's a fairly, it's a specific type of story, essentially, and it's not one that's really trying to go all out there and be um, wild with that. But we also do see that there are lots of uh, background characters who are given really strong narrative arcs um, around, for example, coming out as trans or um, just around various other uh, parts of their identities and how they interact with each other. However, the books themselves are just really fun and very sweet. Um, and again, I did sort of say at the beginning I was worried they'd be saccharine. There are some scenes where I'm a little bit like, uh, <laughs> come on now. But I think overall it, it won me over because I don't think it's trying to be anything else. I don't think it's trying to sell itself as the only love story that's out there. I think it's very clearly just being a love story. Um, and particularly, you know, the, the way it is done is really quite sweet particularly when you add in things around the art style and so you know there's this sort of very very beautiful but very expressive uh, style of art used throughout and th this is this makes me a tiny bit nervous for watching the adaptation now because i'm now sort of there's a very wry sense of humor that follows this of sort of characters making little glances with their eyes at each other through sort of a couple of panels on a page um and sometimes it's not immediately, you know, I, I'm worried that that on a TV or for kind of film adaptation might lose some of that magic, but actually I'm quite excited to see how that all um, compares. And I think it's also just worth noting that just as a series, this has been wildly successful and is due to finish with a fifth book, uh, I believe next year. Um, and I kind of like that that's been sort of rounded off. We're going to have the sort of conclusion to this story, but ultimately at the same time going through some quite important things. And it's worth noting what some of those issues are. This book deal, the, this series rather, deals a lot with issues, you know, the expected issues that you'd have for a queer romance. So coming out, um, working out your identity. As I mentioned, there there are some characters who are trans um, that we get reference to. But then there are also these other um parts that come up um there is in sort of some of the later books there is a sort of more prolonged discussion around eating disorders um we have a lot focusing on mental health um, and we also see a lot of the the sort of aspects of sort of male characters battling their own um issues with masculinity and, and how that manifests itself we see a lot about parents and parental separation um and a few other things that kind of come up that are really quite beautiful. Um, but also just lots of dogs. There are lots of dogs, well, a few dogs, but they come up, the, the dogs come up regularly enough and are incredibly cute. So it's worth it for that, I think. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's not shying away from having some of those more difficult conversations. And I think I, I sort of say later when it sort of deals with things around eating disorders and mental health, um, from at least from my viewpoint, I found that really quite successful. It's done in a very open and very sensitive way. And it's not kind of, love will fix everything. Everything is solved by having a good partner. Instead, it's sort of, this is work, this is hard. And, you know, you need a support network around you of which a partner may be one. Um, so it's really quite delightful. And um, I think it's well worth checking out if I haven't made that clear already. And on a sort of final point of all of these books together, I think um, it's really interesting thinking about that discussion that sort of has been had online about representation and about finally seeing yourself. Um, for, for many queer people, myself included, the relationships that I grew up with seeing on, on TV or, or anything like that were often shrouded with much more complicated storylines. So for example, I remember quite vividly seeing queer characters on screen as a, as a kid before I knew who I was, before I, you know, before I knew that I was gay. And a lot of those storylines, because of the times, were very, very different. It was, you know, there was such a big focus on a character coming out and being intensely bullied. And obviously that still goes on and there are still many fights to be had um, for, for rights. But it's interesting to note that you know, many of those stories I would have seen had the central part of the queer experience being one of misery and shame and pain. And actually something like the Heartstopper series, as sort of sweet and cutesy as it is, does deal with hard issues, but also at the heart of it is a love story. It's a reminder that there is sort of something quite positive um, to the queer experience as well. And um, 
I think that's something that is really quite profound. I don't think that's something we can very easily turn our noses up at. Many of the queer characters I saw on screen, apart from them being bullied, um, were parts of storylines around global and sort of national issues that were taking place. So Section 28 in the UK was a piece of legislation that meant that um, LGBT um, issues and people weren't really allowed to be spoken about in school. Um, and what that really then sort of meant for a lot of queer people was that, you know, if, for example, somebody came out at school, the teacher could not engage with that conversation at all for, for fear of losing their job. They couldn't teach things like um, same-sex sex education or they couldn't teach many, many other things in school. And the cumulative impact, at least in the UK, I'm sure there are, there are sort of similar bills um, and policies in, in other parts of the world, but that had such a huge effect on so many people at not really being able to see themselves, not being able to have conversations about who they were, not really having the language for who they were. And so for, for all of the, the softness of something like Heartstopper, it's worth noting that many people didn't have that. And I think so much of that discussion that's gone on online around, you know, this was my Heartstopper moment. This was my Heartstopper moment of, you know, who, who were the, the on-screen romances that they saw that reflected themselves. Many of them were quite tragic stories. <laughs> Many of them were. And then the other person died. Um, and the, the moral of this is if you're queer, you will die alone. <laughs> and, you know, that is something quite traumatising and quite, uh, quite scary as a young person. Um, never mind some of the other things that were going on sort of geopolitically, um, you know, the the AIDS crisis was a big part of that. And so, so many queer character storylines, particularly queer men um, in, in stories, uh, you know, sort of soap operas or TV shows or whatever, revolved around, you know, this is almost a, a punishment or a, a kind of a natural thing to happen to queer characters that they just are killed off by the scriptwriters in that way uh, and so I think it's really quite interesting that as a sort of cultural moment I guess which sounds like a really grand thing to say but you know there's been significant buzz around this it's worth sort of saying I think that this I think would have a really profound experience for a lot of young queer people growing up and for allies around them to kind of read something or see something where this is sort of just a regular part of the school experience. You might have a friend who's gay or who is struggling with something and how you might be able to best support them and be there for them. So that's a rambly way to say I really enjoyed these. I found them very charming. Again, not perfect. They're all a bit schmaltzy, all a bit saccharine, but I think we can allow this for this moment. Not everything has to be sort of deep and dark and high flute and literary. It's fine for things to just be quite nice. And that's what I found these. Um, so I'd really love to hear your thoughts if you've read them and really enjoyed them. And um, yeah, I am now keen to watch the TV show. Um, also, no spoilers, please, in the comments for anything that happens during the, the, the like, series here. Anyway, I've been Bob the Booker. Take care and speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.